going on, my friends? I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today, we are going to be discussing the difference between multiple meals in a day versus just a few. If you have followed my videos for some time, you know that I myself do intermittent fasting and I have a lot of my clients doing intermittent fasting. With that being said, it is not something that I have people do, nor do I do day in and day out, every single day, 365, forever and ever and ever. So there is a good healthy balance between doing intermittent fasting and not, but that is a whole different video in itself. So I know if you follow the fitness industry, a lot of people follow the six meals a day, eat every two hours. That is going to kickstart your metabolism. If any of you have heard that, drop a one in the comments. I know there is a lot of false information going around, especially in the fitness industry. And what works for one person is not gonna work for everyone, okay? And that goes with anything, whether we're talking how many times that you eat in a day, or should you follow a high protein, a high carb, whatever the case may be, you gotta find what is best for you in your current situation, but also what you're gonna be able to do in the long run, okay? I always try to bring that back into play because regardless of what we're discussing, you have to do what's best for you and what you enjoy, what you're gonna be able to maintain because I don't care what you are following protocol wise, if you are not going to continue that, it's not going to work to your benefit. So when it comes to eating multiple meals in a day, I wanna kinda of debunk why that is not the best for metabolism. And again, with that being said, it doesn't mean you can't burn fat eating every two hours because I know a ton of fitness people that are able to be efficient at fat burning, doing it that way. But again, they have been doing a lot of the right things for years on end. They've been dieting and then they reverse diet. They've been eating healthy the majority of the time. They've been eating higher caloric diets followed by their cutting diet. So with anything else, you have to follow something, but also don't get caught up in the exact same thing over and over and over and keep your body in a deprivation state for too long. So that's why a lot of fitness competitors do the, the caloric deficit cutting diet. But when they're done with that, they have to reverse diet it, meaning they're kicking their calories back up. You can't keep your body in a state of stress, whether it's doing way too much HIIT training, way too much fasting, way too much caloric deficit cutting, you have to find that healthy balance in every regard. So just to kind of debunk the multiple meals being the most efficient way at increasing your metabolic rate, here is the cut and drive, the hormone uh, scientific reasons why that's really not the case. Again, this is not meaning that you can't burn fat eating multiple meals, but you have to consider everything. So insulin, when we eat, I don't care if you're eating proteins, if you're eating carbohydrates, if you're eating fat, we are increasing insulin. Okay, so the pancreas releases insulin to bring your blood sugar back down to baseline. But, so when you're consuming carbohydrates and you're consuming um, fat and you're consuming everything but straight fiber and protein, it spikes blood sugar. But even through the digestive process itself, you are still spiking insulin through the digestive enzymes and all of that. So again, I always say when we're in the presence of insulin, it is so hard to burn fat efficiently. And the reason being is that hormone is released when we're, when we're eating anything, okay? Even if it's not impacting blood sugar from like a carbohydrate standpoint, again, we're still slightly increasing insulin. And it does take about four hours to get that out of our system. So you have to keep in mind, if we're constantly eating, we're constantly in an insulin phase, if you will. We have insulin in our body that is spiked. So insulin breaks down fats to fatty acids in order for the cell to be able to absorb it, okay? 
breaks down carbohydrates to glucose cells so our cells can absorb it and breaks down protein to amino acids so our cells can absorb it so that is like an absorption storage phase if you will when our insulin is elevated so again picture that we're in that storage 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 if you're continually eating every two hours our body is not going to be able to utilize that to burn it and that's where uh, glucagon comes into play so it allows the nutrients stored to be released and burned the two work hand in hand they're the complete opposites of one another but we can't get to this without this being done right so if we're constantly doing this over and over and over and insulin is spiked over and over and over then glucagon can't do its job so there was a study done with two different groups of individuals and and i believe they were all diabetics but i could be wrong there anyhow the one group was eating multiple meals in a day and they were smaller all in all caloric value was the same the other group was eating fewer larger meals in a day and every single thing pointed at the increase in your metabolic rate as you eat smaller larger meals i'm sorry fewer larger meals in a day so it increased the metabolic rate increased autophagy which is our body's cellular recycling process so again everything that you're doing needs to be for the greater good the long-term effects and if you're utilizing intermittent fasting and you're utilizing low glycemic nutrition and you're utilizing all the things with doing a proper amount of exercise not too much you are benefiting your body for the long haul not just burning fat and calories right here and now so very important and decrease in insulin obviously because we're minimizing the times that we're eating so we're not going to have that surge of insulin nearly as much as if we're eating multiple times in a day and again storage 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 burning 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 okay and then increasing the balance of our hunger hormones so leptin and ghrelin the hunger hormones that are really out of whack for a lot of people and i think it's mainly because so many of us have fallen into that whole myth of multiple meals in a day helps us be more efficient kickstarts the metabolism the earlier that you eat in the morning it just revs up revs up the engine for the day i know i used to do it but i was ravenous i was so hungry every single day all throughout the day and i'm like all right i just ate an hour ago when can, when is another hour going to pass so i can eat again if any of you guys feel that way drop a two in the comments because in my opinion that's no way to live that is not a fun way to be going throughout the day that your body is constantly obsessing over meals and hunger so that is one reason why i love intermittent fasting is because it gets those hunger hormones back in check and it allows you to focus on what is really meant to be focused on throughout the day that's you your family your health your job not food not food that's not the most important thing back in the day the our ancestors the hunters and gatherers they only ate when they found food and their body wasn't like always feeling like i need to eat i need to eat because they ate maybe one to two times in a day at most sometimes they went for days fasting and so it's just it's interesting how the world has made us believe otherwise so i hope this is helpful i hope now you're not afraid to only eat two meals a day not to say again that you should do that every single day forever and ever and ever because that's not healthy either so as always thank you for watching and have a great day